NVIDIA today had a lot of announcements and some big claims for its 4070 Ti, its laptops, and uh, fighting words for consoles. Here's a preview. They are also gaming powerhouses, up to twice as fast as a PlayStation 5, but one-sixth the size. And more than four times the price. Wow, two times more performance, four times more money. Great job, NVIDIA. You're really helping Sony sell some PlayStation 5s. The new RTX 4080 Super Pods will deliver an amazing 64 teraflops of graphics goodness to each gamer. That is five times the performance of an Xbox Series X. Five times the performance of an Xbox. So we're already setting a low bar for our supercomputer to hit, uh, but okay. And as a benefit, you also get to pay for it every single month forever that you want to continue playing the games for it's kind of like Xbox Live, except it costs more and you don't get anything at the end of it. There's no physical hardware. But it's five times more performance. The supercomputer. The RTX 4070 Ti delivers up to three times the performance of our previous flagship GPU, the 3090 Ti. Wait, wait, what was, did anyone catch that? 4070 Ti, the 3090 Ti. 70 Ti, 90 Ti. Ti, Ti. Tied, TI. Uh, so they're playing into the meme, but this is the good news. The RTX 30 series continues to be the best GPU for mainstream gamers. That's right, they finally said it. The GPU from two years ago is the best mainstream option for gamers. Thanks for watching our announcement of new products. We've done it, we'll see you all next time. Highly portable 14 inch laptops are becoming the fastest growing form factor. Over 13 million were sold last year, twice as many as in 2020. But 95% of these laptops are only capable of basic productivity tasks. They start at 1999. So just a small, small confirmation bias thing here, Nvidia. Uh, so the reason most of those laptops are used for productivity tasks is not necessarily because of the GPU that's in them, it's because they're cheap. And starting laptops at $2,000 or 1000 for a 4050, you're not saving us from the problem that we've defined as using cheap laptops for production. It's just a really weird comparison to make. Kind of the straws are that way if you're grasping for them. But there's good news. Nvidia's chart here shows us that not only is it January 3rd ADA, but in the year of ADA, 14-inch performance over time, a new metric indicated by the y-axis, increased by 20 times. That's right, and because inches are a linear metric in this inch performance over time chart, having that 20x multiplier means that one inch in the year of ADA, formerly known as the year 2023, is equivalent to 20 inches. But you'll notice that NVIDIA did not have a single slide that indicated the linear performance multiplier increase for the metric system. That's because it didn't increase. So Imperial system is now better. It's improved by 20x in just one year after millennia of stagnation. We've finally done it. The Imperial system's better. Thank you everybody who uses it. Sorry, Europeans, you lose. It's not on the chart. TI. So in NVIDIA's newest endeavor in compensatory charts, with one inch being equal to 20, uh, there's a lot of ways this commentary could go. Most of them lead down the path of demonetization. So let's just start the video and talk about the specs. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Height Y60. The Height Y60 is one of the most unique cases to launch anytime recently coming in multiple color options like this bright red, and it's also built for both water cooling and air cooling. The case pays extreme attention to detail, particularly with cable management paths like you can see with the quality rubber grommets that are always passed through, and with split lower and upper chambers. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, first up, the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti, or whatever, that's what they're launching on January 5th. It's going to be $800, so it came down 100 bucks from the 4080 12GB. The 4070 Ti is a 4080 12GB. It has a new name. They re-stickered and repainted all the cards that had the old name on it. They 
threw out all the old boxes and printed new ones, and they've changed the name to 4070 Ti. It's simple enough. The original card was announced something like five months ago now, and now it's back, and it's 100 bucks cheaper. And it's also launching with the market framing of the 7900 XT and XTX now existing, uh, and it's a different, it, different position than NVIDIA was in previously when it first announced them. We're actually just gonna hard drop this clip into the middle of the original recording because as we were working on editing the video you're watching, I went back and looked at the charts and video published. It is massively misleading where they're depicting the 4070 Ti. So they're saying that the 4070 Ti, they were using the phrase up to three times more performance than a 3090 Ti. We, we pointed this out with AMD too where they were using FSR as sort of this uh, excuse to functionally lie about the performance expectations, and NVIDIA is doing the exact same thing. AMD talked about 8K and how crisp and smooth 8K is. NVIDIA is, is trying to build people up, just like AMD. They, they don't learn from each other, these two companies. They're making the same mistake, where they're building people up, to expect something which is wholly unattainable. This is not a realistic expectation to set. To say three times the performance, because what this does, people should be looking at this going, okay, they said like 1.5x to three times the performance of a 4070 Ti, so if it doesn't hit that, it's not performing as advertised, therefore, bullshit. It's really disappointing because Nvidia actually, genuinely was on a pretty good track with the initial 30 launch stuff, and they were doing okay with just uh, showing a couple numbers and kind of letting people just watch the reviews, but now they are, we believe they are completely misleading the audience. Nowhere on that slide does it ever have an asterisk or a star or a legal footnote or anything to disclose how they came to the result three times the performance. At least when Intel and AMD uh, fill their slides with BS, they typically have like legal footnote. We used FSR, we used this test bench, here were the specs, here were the test conditions. So it's like, okay, at least you were kind of transparent about how insane the slide was. But NVIDIA here, they're just running with it. It's, it's not really a fair comparison. So anyway, that's it for the insert here. Uh, just re-watching it, became really frustrated with how incredibly misleading the marketing was and how they are once again setting people up to expect something that will not become true, and then they're gonna surprise Pikachu face when everybody hates the card. So let's just get back to the original recording now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are going to be reviewing the 4070 Ti at some point in the near future. Uh, I don't wanna mix up what I can and can't say, so that's it for this section. Check back very soon and you'll find our Ti review. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll have interesting things to say about it whenever we get it in and can review it. Now, uh, we need some B-roll to cover our transition to the next cut, so here's NVIDIA's new workplace injury simulation. Augmenting real-world label data with auto-label synthetic data vastly improves AI model accuracy. And after it was done with its aggressive forklift rendering, uh, NVIDIA talked about upscaled video. This is actually pretty cool. So for all of the things we can be cynical about and uh, disappointed in, by the way, grab our new disappointment shirt on store.gamersaccess.net, in stock and featuring three different GPUs on the front and the most disappointing launches of 2022 on the back. One of the better announcements here was the move to do super resolution just for video streaming. So obviously you could couple this with something like GeForce Now, it'd be a little weird because then you have a, a 30 or 40 series GPU and you're also upscaling locally while streaming remotely. But maybe one of the more beneficial areas they didn't really talk about is on the side of YouTube. So with YouTube pushing more frequently, like 480p, 720p as the auto setting, and with uh, also the combination of just generally bad internet around the world, but especially in large parts of the US. The idea here is that you can remove compression artifacting, you can upscale the effective resolution, and uh, you can improve the video stream quality for local performance while using less bandwidth. So this should be incredibly interesting to companies like YouTube because suddenly users are able to use gaming type technology to sort of fake a higher quality localized render 
while reducing the internet requirements. Uh, also good for people who are stuck on maybe DSL or just lower speed internet connection or something like that. So that's actually, it's pretty cool. It has some big implications for the streaming service providers as well. It does require a 30 or a 40 series GPU, uh, but that doesn't really change the fact that for non-gaming applications, it's, uh, it's potentially a pretty powerful technology. As for the next one, NVIDIA also spent a lot of time talking about laptops in its announcements today. Uh, so NVIDIA's actual news, the thing that people didn't already know five months ago, unlike the 4070 Ti, was mostly relegated to the 4050 to 4090 class laptops that they're announcing. Getting straight into the specs, there is no M designator on these parts. They are just naming them 4090 all the way down to 4050. The 4090 SKU hosts 9728 CUDA cores. So for comparison, that means the 4090 desktop SKU runs 68% more CUDA cores at 16,384. NVIDIA is really just leaning into the 4080 12 gigabyte naming at this point. The laptops have almost always had different specs, uh, not every generation, but this one's a pretty large change. The memory gets cut to 16 gigabytes. It's still a lot for a production laptop, but not what you'd really expect for a 4090 class type name. The memory bus is also cut down, this one to 256 bits wide from 384. And some of this makes sense since they're going to cut down the power as well with this configuration at 80 to 150 watts for the power uh, setup. But then again, there's nothing stopping them from at least throwing an M on the SKU name to signify the difference. Now, the specs for this laptop 4090 are actually the same as the 4080 desktop part other than things like power consumption and the frequency targets. This is somewhat expected because it is completely unreasonable to expect a 450 watt GPU only <laughs> to be in a laptop chassis. Uh, I mean, look at the size of GPUs, look at a laptop, not going to happen. So they have to draw down the performance, but it is probably time to bring back the M designation or something because these are so starkly contrasted, it's really not the same part. This is like the 4080 12 gigabyte versus 4080 16 gigabyte. They are entirely different at this class. Um, they're also all on GDDR6, so they're not on GDDR6X. There are some benefits to this that might be related to power. So NVIDIA says that they can run GDDR6 at a lower voltage and therefore conserve on power. So maybe there's an actual reason for that aside from just like cost and cutting performance, for example, uh, because it may be related to battery life. But they also modulate the memory speeds now with something they call a tri-speed memory controller. So performance will be somewhat variable on the memory as well. As for the rest of the specs, the RTX 4080 runs 74, 24 CUDA cores and 12 gigabytes of memory with a 60 to 150 watt target. The RTX 4070 Ti has 76, 80 CUDA cores, the desktop one. So the 4080 laptop SKU is actually somewhere below a 4070 Ti by core count alone. And just in case they didn't announce the 4070 Ti specs, we didn't check, um, the Tech Power Up database has the core count. So we're going off of that. We're assuming it's accurate. Now there's more loss too, of course, with the bandwidth reduction and the expected frequency reduction on the core. As for the rest, the 4070 laptop SKU runs 4608 CUDA cores, the 4060 runs 3072, and the 4050 runs just 2560 CUDA cores. Memory on the 4070 and 4060 is eight gigabytes, with the 4050 on six gigabytes and a pretty small memory bus of 96 bits wide. And then as for pricing, the cheapest RTX 4080 laptop is $2,000. They coupled them together, so they said the 4080 and 4090 laptops start at two grand. The 4090 is probably not going to start at two grand. <laughs> it will probably be higher. We don't know where it is, though. And then the cheapest 4050 SKU is $1,000, and we don't know the prices of the rest, but they're gonna, the laptops will fall somewhere in between. Obviously, it's more variable in a laptop than in a desktop card, but that's going to be the floor. Now, for the next story, in NVIDIA's quest to continue serviceifying gaming, they also announced updates to GeForce Now as a streaming solution, kind of going the Adobe route of uh, you don't get to buy a software anymore. You can pay us indefinitely forever until you die for it. So the servers now include what NVIDIA calls an RTX 4080 Super Pod. And this, they say, is five times better than an Xbox whatever that means. NVIDIA also noted that these servers can support 240 hertz local playback with Reflex, DLSS3, and they support ray tracing. Not a surprise, they're basically 4080s in a cloud server 
uh, that you know, you that you render it there and then you stream it to your system via just video streaming like any any other video stream. So the cost to become an ultimate member of GeForce Now, which is the one that gives you access to the higher end hardware, is twenty dollars per month. Uh, for comparison, Xbox Live at its cheapest SKU we quickly saw was ten dollars per month. So the best way for consoles right now to compete is actually going to be to further emphasize local playback, meaning uh, a, a paring down of the restrictions in place on internet-based gaming. So this is good. It's actually good news that NVIDIA is explicitly targeting consoles here rather than only targeting, say, AMD or Intel this time. Because with NVIDIA taking shots at consoles, it's an external pressure on the consoles which are clearly already applying an external pressure on NVIDIA to the extent that they feel a need to respond. Uh, and this pressure should apply some competitive encouragement to change something. And if NVIDIA gets any level of success with GeForce Now, the consoles, probably the best way for them to compete is going to be a reduction in the cost for the online services or a reduction in the requirement to always be online for so many games. And that'll uh, also come into play with game developers. But that's, we like to see that level of competition because consoles have been going way too far in the direction of service-based gaming. Uh, it is becoming concerning, and hopefully they sort of claw each other back to local-based gaming on the device itself, meaning once the servers eventually die or games come offline, hopefully you can still play the thing. So that's it for their announcements. The rest was sort of AI, deep learning, stuff like that. Um, they had the aggressive forklift simulation. Still not really sure what that was about. And they showed Rocket League being played from the seat of a car. Uh, but in terms of sort of our core audience, it's laptops and the 4070 Ti. And the Ti we'll talk about more very soon. So check back for that. Subscribe as always. Go to store.gamersaccess.net. Grab one of our brand new t-shirts. They are limited in runs. We're only going to do three runs of these. So if you want one, grab it now. It's related to our disappointment build video we just posted with a crazy intro. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll have more news this week, a lot of it, because there's a trade show going on right now, CES. So subscribe for that. We'll see you all next time.